going in a different subject, and this is probably the the big thing that everyone's been talking about since, I guess, Monday night, Monday afternoon. Stone Cold um, Steve Austin, baby. <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin's back. That's right. Can you imagine that day? Brigera, I mean, like, can you imagine? Val- it's Valentine's Day, right? And mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, and I wake up, and it's uh, something's going on with Cody, and uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's coming back. And it's like, oh boy, you know, and no one knows it yet, but knowing that it's wrestling in 12 hours, they probably will. Right. And uh-huh. so I'm out and I'm getting texts when I promised I'm not going to be <laughs> working. <laughs> but anyway, so, so, but what, what was, you know, again, like, I, I mean, what was your reaction to the Cody thing? I mean, I, I did it. it, it, it blindside every, everyone was shocked. Yeah. I mean, it's it, like, it, Wrestling is, is we all know when our deals are up, like, especially the EVPs, like we, we know when our deals are up. We know when our, um, in the case of the bucks, like when their, their options kick in for, for myself, um, I, I don't have a deal like that. As you know, I'm, I'm up next year, just straight up done. Um, so I'd have to resign a new one. There's no option. Um, and you know, we knew Cody's much like the bucks. It was, it was that time. And, um, when, you know, we would hear that, okay, there's, there's possibly uh, some difficulty with the renegotiation or whatever. Uh, it, it was almost like you just, you never, you never think it's going to go in that direction where, where the talent is going to opt for leaving. Um, especially since, you know, when this first thing started, I would say the most passionate person about a revolution uh, most the most passionate person about kind of creating an us versus them mentality was that was Cody. So it was strange for him just to choose to up and walk away. However, that being said, you know, feelings change. You, you, you the environment around you is, is ever changing. It's constantly changing. And maybe, you know, the, the, the mission statement or the goal or the revolution, whatever it is that you're searching for, trying to create, maybe that isn't what it is anymore to you. Maybe that, you know, isn't your, your inspiration. Isn't, that isn't what gets you out of bed every, every day. So I would always encourage everyone, you know, in wrestling and life, whatever, if, if your work isn't fulfilling, if it doesn't make you happy, you really should look for opportunities elsewhere in a place where you can feel creatively free in a place where you feel that your work is being appreciated and fulfilled. Um, I know, I can't say I know. I'm guessing that knowing Cody as, as well as I, I know him, I, I don't really think, I don't think it was a, an issue of money. I, I don't think it was Tony not shelling out enough, enough cash to keep him uh, invested with the company. Uh, Cody, he, he, he really believed in the vision in the original vision that he brought to the table for AEW. And I think the original vision that the team brought to the table when AW was first becoming a promotion, we didn't know where this would go. We had, we had been optimistic about it. We had thought we would be where we are today, where we would be considered, you know, a major promotion and we would have our fan base and we would have hopefully a lot of um, satisfied customers watching our product. But I guess we never really sat down and, and, and talked to each other about, okay, we have this opportunity to now change wrestling. How do you see it? How do you see it? How do you see it? How we make this work? And maybe in the end, you know, we had the bucks and their vision. We had my vision and then we had Cody's vision and all of our visions were different from one another. And I would say mine was more similar to, to what the Bucks had envisioned and Cody's was, was out there. It was, it was much different. Um, and um, you're going to get that, I think, when finally you've, you've committed your life to an industry and a business and, and finally someone goes, okay, you've, you've done this job all your life. You've been raised into this business with these shackles on you to a degree by someone or something. Now those are off. You've got carte blanche. What is it you want to do? 
And I can understand that there might be some heartbreak if, if you if you you were promised that or told that and it doesn't come to fruition. I get it. I mean, but again, um, though my professional relationship with Cody was 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 great. Um, he's not a guy that uh, I, I go and get a, a diet Pepsi with on my in my off time. So I don't know how he personally feels about about anything. Um, so. Um, I can only guess as to why he would leave. And I, I just think that he saw it with his deal up as an opportunity to investigate something within wrestling or in just life in general that would, that would bring him more happiness. And again, like I, I don't want anyone doing what we do in wrestling um, and being completely unhappy or miserable. Cause that, that destroys you. It's, it's a, such a huge, like mental, emotional, and physical commitment that if you're miserable, miserable while doing it, um, it can only lead to bad things. And, you know, we've seen it in, in wrestling where that, that can lead to terrible things, whether it be, you know, alcohol, pills, drugs, um, depression, depression. A day. And we, we, it, exactly. And then, and, and yeah. that runs rampant in wrestling. Yeah. And we, I would hate for that to happen. Um, when what we were set out to do was something extremely positive for professional wrestling, or that was always the goal anyway. Um, and that's sort of where, where the Bucks and, and I differed, where we never wanted to go to war with, uh, with Vince or WWE. Um, I, we just wanted to give people an option and just get us a platform for our brand of storytelling and our style of wrestling. And I think you know, when, when Cody had his way of going about things, um, it, I, I wasn't sure how to follow up with that, nor was I interested. And so there was sort of like, there's Kenny doing his thing. There's the bucks doing their thing. And there's the Cody verse over there doing whatever it is that he does. And then there's the stuff that Tony does. And then eventually, you know, as, as you know, um, I guess probably a lot of fans know now, you know, it's, it's, it's essentially now just, just it's Tony's show. Um, and you know, of course he's always going to listen to our advice and he's going to, uh, take, take our, our, um, suggestions to heart, but AEW is very much, um, you know, Tony's thing, Tony's, Tony's, Tony's baby. And, uh, we're there to support it in any way that we can. And, um, I, it's it's very possible that this current version of AEW just wasn't a good fit for Cody um, to Cody. For me, you know, I I feel like he was one of the original four. And there's always going to be a place for him, and there's always you you saw it in his his ladder match with Sammy. He's got incredible utility, and he's able to help our younger talent. Um, so it's it's not nothing from an in ring perspective. There's there's, there's no issues there. Um, yeah, uh, if I had a clear cut answer for you guys, I, I would I would love to tell you, um, but I but I don't know it, and all I can all I can say is that whatever he decides to do, um, I heard he's on a flight to Saudi Arabia. So if, if that makes him happy, that that makes him happy. Um, I, I just and and again, Bucks and I were we weren't in this for the war, so. All, all the the guys and gals at WWE doing their thing, always wishing for the best for those guys, always. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.